So this is going to be a walkthrough of a series RL circuit. And what I mean by the RL is we have resistance. So there's a resistor there. And we also have this resistance here. So that's the R portion of the circuit. And then we have the L, which is the inductance there. Now, you might notice I've got this little dotted box around this one over here. What that signifies is that this is a coil. This is the whole coil. It has inductance and it has resistance in it. Now, as we know, a coil is literally that. It's just a coil of wire that is wrapped around a core. All wire has resistance, so we need to signify that somehow. So that's why we do this. We have the resistance there, the inductance there. We put this box that signifies that that is the whole thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sign some, some things we're going to try to figure out here. And we're going to go from here, and we're going to walk through the step of each one of these. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So here we go. I've assigned values to the circuit. I've said that this has got a source voltage of 120 volts, 60 hertz, that this resistor here is 75 ohms. The coil itself has a 300 millihenry inductance and a 25 ohm resistor in it. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to figure out the impedance of the entire circuit. We're going to try to figure out the current through the entire circuit. We're going to figure out what the voltage is across the coil, so from that point to that point. Then we're going to try to figure out what the power is of the entire circuit the theta of the circuit or the phase angle of the entire circuit, the theta or the phase angle of the coil itself. We're going to figure out what the reactive power is of the circuit, and then we're going to figure out what the apparent power is of the circuit. So let's take a look at what's next. Before we go any further, we need to quickly go over the formulas that we're going to be using in this walkthrough. So here we have the formula for inductive reactance, which is XL, which is measured in ohms. It's 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance. So we'll be using that. Then we're going to get into our power formulas. We have I squared R. It's important that it is the R because that determines the watts of the circuit. So that is the resistive power or the true power or the active power, the power being dissipated. Then we also have the I squared XL. That gives us our reactive power. And then we have the I squared Z, which is going to give us our VA. So let's take a look at what's happening in the circuit now with these formulas in mind. Now, whenever I'm working on an RL circuit or any kind of circuit that has inductance and reactance, I love triangles. So I get myself a triangle drawn up here. I've got this triangle drawn up here. It's a right triangle. I add up my total resistance in the circuit. So I've got 75 ohms here. I've got 25 ohms here. These guys are heading in the same direction, so I can add them arithmetically. 75 plus 25 equals 100 ohms of total circuit resistance. The next thing we've got to do is figure out what is my reactance in the circuit, my inductive reactance. So what we're going to do is take that formula, 2 pi FL, which is going to be 2 pi, which is 6.28, times the F, which is 60 hertz, times the L, which is 0.3, or 300 millihenries. And then we're going to figure out our next step. We punch the numbers in there, and we get 113 ohms. That means that we have 113 ohms on this side of our triangle. Now we've got 100 ohms of circuit resistance. We've got 113 ohms of circuit reactance. Now we can figure out what our impedance in this circuit is. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we just use 100 squared plus 113 squared gives us the square root of, and that will give us what our hypotenuse is. In this case, if you're following along, it ends up being 151 ohms. That is our total circuit impedance. That is the total opposition to current flow in this entire circuit because we've added these resistors up with this guy, so we have to add them vectorially. We get 151. Everything is unlocked, so we are ready to go on this. So let's plug in that 151 ohms of our impedance. Now, and I've got that all here as well, now we need to figure out what our current is going through this circuit. So let's do that. All we have to do is take our source voltage and divide it by our overall opposition to current flow, and that will give us our total current that is flowing through this circuit. In this case, that works out to be 795 milliamps. So I've got 795 milliamps there as well. And to keep in mind, this is a series circuit, so the current stays the same. If I have 795 milliamps through here, it means that I've got 795 milliamps across this inductor, across the resistance of the inductor, and down here and across this resistor here as well and back. 795 milliamps. So let's talk about the voltage of the coil. So we're looking for the voltage across this entire thing. Now what we're going to do is we already worked out a little impedance triangle for this guy. Let's take a look at what that looks like. 
So what I've done is I've taken 25 ohms of the circuit resist, or not the circuit, but the inductor resistance. I've taken 113, which is what this guy was, of this one. That squared plus that squared gives me this squared. So that's 116 ohms of impedance just across the coil. We worked out before across the entire circuit. Now we're working out this, the impedance across this coil. So we do that, that ends up being 116 ohms. Now with that in mind, all we have to do now is take current, which remains constant, multiply it by the impedance of the coil, and we should be able to get the voltage of the coil. So 0.795 times 116 ohms gets me 92.2 volts. And that gives us that voltage of the coil. So we're off and away. Now we need to figure out what the power is of the entire circuit. Well, in order to figure out what power is, power is the power being dissipated across this resistor and this resistor. So the easiest way to do that is I've got this resistance, which is 75 ohms, and this resistance, which is 25. I can add those two together, and I can use that formula we looked at before, which is I squared R. So I'm going to take 0.795 squared and multiply it by 100 to get my power being dissipated in this entire circuit. Again, 0.795 squared, which is the current, times the total circuit resistance gives me 63.2 watts of power being dissipated. That is only across the resistive element. Watts are only dissipated across resistance, not across inductance. Now let's talk about what the theta is of the circuit. Now we're going back to this triangle from before where I've got 100 ohms of resistance, this plus this. I got 113 ohms of reactance, which is this. I get my overall impedance, which is over here of 151. This is a circuit triangle. It's my impedance triangle. I can figure out what the theta is, and I like to just go 100 divided by 151, and then I inverse cos that to get my angle, which in this case works out to be 48.5 degrees. So we put that in there. Now we want to figure out what the theta is just of the coil alone. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our impedance triangle of just this coil. So here I've got just the coil alone. I've got 25 ohms of resistance of this coil. I've got 113 ohms of reactance, which gives me 116 ohms of impedance of the coil. I'm going to use cos again, 25 divided by 116, and I inverse cos that. Boom, I get 77.6 degrees just for the coil alone. That is my theta just for the coil. So there we go. We've got 77.6 degrees there for the theta of the coil. Next up, the VARs of the circuit. Well, the VARs of the circuit, if you notice, we only have 113 ohms of reactance in this entire circuit. We only have that one coil here. So to determine the VARs, again, I can use that I squared formula, but I'm using I squared times XL to figure out what my VARs are, because VARs are reactive, which is just across the inductive component of the circuit. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I squared, 0.795 squared, times the reactance, which is 113 ohms, gives you 71.4 VARs. And that gives me my total VARs for the circuit. Next up is my VA. Now, when I did my VA before I had my impedance triangle, I worked out my total circuit impedance is 151 ohms. All I have to do then is go I squared times 151 ohms to get my apparent power of the circuit. So I punch that in there. I got 0.795 squared times 151, and I get 95.4 VA. Now, another way you could go about it is VA is volt amps. I know we always call it apparent power, but I always look at this as VA volt amps. I could take this current and multiply it by 120 volts. I'm going to get the same answer. So that's the awesome thing about these circuits is you can double check your work. So there you have it. We have a VA of 95.4 VA. So these circuits, once you break them down into the components, it's not that difficult to work through. So the next step is we're going to talk about power factor in our next video, and then we'll be putting these things into a parallel circuit later on down the road.